Hello and thank you very much for clicking on this video. So you decided to set up your DEX on the go and you started looking online for a solution. After a couple of minutes of Googling, you probably came across that the lab doc would be a best option for you. And most of the people mentioning two uh, lab docs, NextDoc 2 and HP Elite X3. I do have both of them. So this is a NextDoc 2 and this is HP Elite X3 and which one to pick. So in this video, I will go uh, and compare side by side both of these devices. I do have a list on uh, Microsoft Word, created a list of uh, bullet points, what I would like to uh, cover. And obviously this list is not short, so let's crack on straight away into this video. Before I start going through all this list, uh, I'd like to mention the number one point that is quite crucial for anybody who is looking to get I.O. these devices um, is about the actual HP Elite one because um, the, the issue that right now is happening with HP Elite laptops and Android 10 is a mouse pointer issue. And the mouse pointer issue was happening with that is the um, the trackpad on the HP Elite acts very funky if you're connecting the uh, Galaxy device to get DeX and the Galaxy device is updated to Android 10. And the problem is basically when you're going from left to right and from right to left, the mouse pointer moves across the screen slower than it's supposed to. And when you're using a trackpad to go up and down the screen uh, with the mouse pointer, the, track, the mouse pointer on the screen goes much, much faster than it's supposed to. So horizontally is super slow and vertically is super fast. So this is, could be a deal breaker for you if you're looking to get yourself an HP Elite lab doc. Um, but this is a quite, there is a quite easy fix for that and it's external mouse. So you can connect the Bluetooth mouse connected or you can connect a wired mouse, a wireless mouse and uh, the problem is resolved. You just don't use the trackpad and use the external mouse. So this is number point, which is uh, mentioned here, what I mentioned here. Um, NextDoc 2 works great with Android 9 and 10 and HP Elite works great with Android 9 and Android 10 has the a slight, uh, well, this issue with the mouse pointer. So let's jump in straight away to a next point, which is size. So let's compare HP and Next Doc 2 side by side. So as you can see, HP Elite is slightly smaller comparing to the Next Doc 2. As you can see, this is how much the Next Doc 2 goes um, further, further away from uh, what size, uh, what HP Elite size is. And uh, next point would be weight the hp elite weighs one kilo so this is weighs one kilo it's very light and where next dog 2 weighs 1.42 kilograms it is heavier and um, if you're looking into portability and you don't want to have a heavy uh, items in your bag this is half a kilo weighs more compared to hp elite one so this could be uh, one of the points that you might pick hp um, instead of the next dog too because of the weight. So this is your call. Next point I would like to cover is a battery life, battery. Next dog two battery is 6,080 6, milliamps where HP Elite one, I can't find online anywhere the actual figure of the battery. Um, so I don't really know what the battery size in this device, but what I can tell from my personal use when I was using the um, the next dog two for a week, and then I was using HP Elite for a week. Um, if I take my Galaxy Tab S6, for example, for example, if I take my Galaxy Tab S6, which is charged to 100%, and next dog two is charged for to 100%, so both of these devices charge to 100%, and I use them non-stop to do uh, you watching YouTube, working, all sorts. Of what you can do on Dex. I can pretty much work uh, for about six to seven hours of constant use. And then the, obviously next dog two dies because it's not only using a battery to uh, turn the screen on and do all the bits and project the decks, etc. but at the same time maintaining the tablet battery to be at 100% as much often as, as possibly can. So it just, 
is charging the tablet same time or maintaining 100%, same time getting the display and everything turned on. Where the battery life on XDoc 2 as well, uh, when uh, sorry, not the XDoc 2, the HP Elite one, and HP Elite was charged on 100%, and the same time the tablet was charged on 100%, I was getting around five hours of constant use. Um, and pretty much doing the same thing what I was doing on XDoc 2 with DAX, watching videos, editing my videos, browsing online, watching Netflix, Plex server, etc., etc., etc. So the battery life felt that this device uh, gives less battery life the next dock too. Uh, obviously your mileage may vary if you're connecting, let's say a smartphone. I wasn't testing these two devices with a smartphone. Somebody is trying to contact me. Let's make sure that, okay, all the gone. So yeah, battery life, next dock too is, I like with battery life in the next two. But one thing I would like to point out about the battery life on the next dock too, for example. So it says that this 6,080 milliamps battery life and this device, like 6,080 milliamps, where Galaxy Tab S6 is 7,000 something milliamps. I can't really see right now on my notes, um, but it's, it's, much, it's much, much, much bigger battery life on a Galaxy Tab S6. And when you compare, this is Nextdoc 2, and this is a tablet. So when you put them side by side, look how tablet is small compared to Nextdoc 2. And Nextdoc 2 has a less battery a smaller battery than a Galaxy Tab S6, which is a bit baffles me. Why or how? And um, it's it's it's. I can't really ex I can't really find it anywhere online the more information about it. But it is smaller than a Galaxy Tab S6, so um, it's a bit weird weird thing about the next dot two. Okay, next point is checking the battery in battery life uh, on the both devices. That again, it could be. A, a bit of a, not an issue, but a bit of a like uh, nonsense for you to, to uh, or annoyance for you to actually do sometimes when you actually need to check. On a HP Elite one, there is a button on the right hand side, there is a button which indicates a battery. If I press and hold, it gives me LED light. There is a four LED lights right now, only one LED light is on. That means it's around 25% of the battery life in this device. To check the battery life on the next dock too, there is no buttons that you can press and check the battery life. Uh, only one way to check the battery life is to turn the device on and then pressing a function of one, even that function of one is supposed to show me a battery life. I'm pressing function of one, it doesn't display anything on the screen. What you need to do, you need to actually connect the device. So you plug in the device and when the device is turning into DeX or let's say you're going to Raspberry Pi, or as, as soon as the display is projecting a, a video uh, output of the device you have to connect, it could be a Galaxy device of DAX, could be a EME UI desktop, it can be a Raspberry Pi, it can be HDMI input or anything like that, then you're pressing the function of one, you will see the battery level. So this is a bit of annoyance when I need to check the battery life and make sure that, okay, I'll grab the HP one, press the button, one LED, all right, okay, I need to charge the device, fine. Plug into charge and fine. I'm coming into my office. I'm like, okay, how much battery life this got? Okay, let's connect everything up. So turn the next dock two on. Connect my Note Nine or Galaxy tablet. Turn into Dex. Get the Dex picture working, and then check what's the battery life. And this is a bit of the annoyance, if you if you ask me. Uh, it's not a big deal breaker, but it is a bit of the um, not user friendly, if I can say that. Okay, next thing I mentioned about the battery life, build quality. Okay, HP uh, feels uh, HP feels like a premium device and very good build. And it is all plastic, but it feels very premium, very good build, uh, a bit of a, a fingerprint magnet, uh, the surface feels very well built, where the hey, next dock 2, it is a bit, uh, it still feels premium, it's well built, but it feels that very heavy duty, heavy duty, and then it's uh, all metal and plastic. And another thing is the screen. So when you open up the screen flex, you open up because it's a metal back, the screen won't gonna flex that much. So I'm gonna try to demonstrate this. So if I put this one, and I can't really flex screen that much. The, obviously the, the, the bottom bit gives a bit of a give, a bit of a flex, but this is not a big deal at all because it's like all metal, it doesn't feel that when I'm pressing too hard, 
it's gonna actually break or snap or anything like that. And the screen, because it's a metal back, like I said, it doesn't really flex that much. On the HP Elite side, because it's all plastic, and when you open up the screen, does a bit of the does a bit of the flex, so it is it just bends a bit when you're actually twisting the screen side by side. But no one's gonna do that, so it's not like a big deal. But it is a bit of a gives gives the feeling that this device will not survive a couple of drops on the on the on the on the floor or on a tarmac or on a, on a brakes or anything like that. And the 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 actual body, the keyboard thing, it does a bit flex, but again, you're not gonna start pressing with like a hammering down the key so it's not like a big problem at all but it is one of the things that I, I thought I would like to uh, let you know that the build quality they both feels built premium but next dog 2 just gives this confident that it will survive longer comparing to uh comparing to uh the uh HP Elite one okay next one so build quality gives confidence yes I mentioned that and next dog 2 screen doesn't flex that's great and HP Elite one, like I said, it does gives a bit of a flex. It does it's 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 um it's not a deal breaker, but like I said, uh, it's one of the things that I would, I, thought I would like to mention to you guys. Next one on my point of the list, it says screen size. The next doc two, uh, next doc two screen size is thirteen point three inches. Thirteen point three inches. The um, IPS display is the IPS display. Yes, next dog two is IPS display, thirteen point three inches, and there is a bit of the border goes around it. So there's a border, uh, and by here it's quite a thicker one, but there is a, a, a slightly narrower one. Borders goes either side, and this is, this is could be a good, good, good way of using. Let me find it now. I had somewhere here. You go, this. This is the phone mount. So what's going to happen with this? Let me get all this sorted. So if I take the next dog two and let's say, uh, let's do this this side. So let me quickly sort this out. And I'll put this one up here so you can add or you can attach like a phone mount. So right now I attach the phone mount and I can obviously put the phone mount phone in here. So like this and then using obviously USB-C to USB-C cable, plug, plug it here plug into a device and I do have a DAX with a phone mount if I need to use something on the phone like a answering video calls or etc. This is the probably the, the good reason to have the borders uh, on the next dock too where comparison to HP Elite one HP Elite a screen is 12.5 uh, uh, size screen with nearly borderless display and this is like I would say about two three millimeters border or like an edge goes, I'm trying to show it uh, in the camera just to show it to you. And it feels when you when I'm using this, it feels that there is no no edges at all. It's, it's all screen, which is again, uh, it's a great, great thing is you get more real estate comparing to the screen to body ratio. But I like the next dog too, because there is an option for me if I want to uh, attach the phone mount on this display and then obviously put the phone instead of putting phone on the desk somewhere he slides around the place I just mount on here and if I need to answer video calls like I said video calls or etc is always easy to access so let me quickly check my list what else I would like to oh yes a uh, screen turning off if while I'm using um, next dog 2 while I'm using next dog 2 in a dex mode or uh, any mode to be honest as, as let's say I'm getting next dog 2 fully working I'm displaying and the shield TV output via HDMI in. I'm getting Raspberry Pi, Raspbian OS on, on the screen, or I'm getting DAX. Once I close the lid, device goes in, a device still, still working, but it turns off the screen and turns off the keyboard backlight if I got that on. Once I open the screen, display goes boom, back on again, back to where it was, and I can carry on working or watching videos, etc., where where I left it. And always at the same time, the device, if I plugged in, is charging. So I can charge this. So I need to, let's say I need to charge my next dock too and my device same time. I plug in to charge my next dock too and I plug in to charge my tablet. Close the lid, turn off the screen on Galaxy tablet and same time I'm getting next dock too and my tablet charged. Then I check, okay, tablet is fully charged. There's a blue LED light, by the way, it's blinking when it's charging and this goes off when it's fully charged. Light is off, tablet is charged. I disconnect both, both items and I can go um, go on to um, 
or to wherever I need to go. So I can charge both devices at the same time using only one wall socket plug. On HP Elite One is a bit of a different, uh, it's actually a, 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 a big difference between uh, comparing to an XDoc2. When I have uh, text displayed on the next dock 2 and I close the lid, it completely turns off the device. So it turns off the device, it's still charging, but I not notice that it's passing the power through my Tower Stab S6. It probably does, does but doesn't, it doesn't, it's just, uh, and not to be honest, I have not really tested that yet. Uh, but the, it's okay if the tablet is charging and passing power through the HP one battery, uh, tablet or phone is still charging. But when I'm using it and I, I'm using the, the device and I suddenly like, okay, I need to go somewhere. Close the lid, do have the bits, come back, open the lid, expecting to continue working or doing what I was doing before, it's all gone. I need to unplug everything and I need to turn the device on, plug it back, everything back on, and then I can, excuse me, I can carry on working and hopefully apps will be still active and don't need to go and relaunch them. It is not a big deal, but comparing the startup time between NextDoc 2 and HP Elite 1, this basically what happens if, we are, if I open this up and I'll demonstrate for you, I press the power button on. So power button on, it says NextDoc ready to connect. Plug everything in, boom, it's all working. Average out about six to eight seconds to get this up and running. With, Next, if with HP 1, you press the power button, and it's charged. You go press the power button, it turns on, it shows a boot up screen or whatnot, it goes, shows a boot up screen, then it goes into the information screen and showing you how you can connect. Come on, here we go, and then you plug everything in, and then hoping it will connect. And what I mean hoping it's gonna connect before, because the HP Elite one is very picky on which kind of cables, USB-C to USB-C, you are using. I have at least seven or eight different cables with me. I can show you two of them. This one uh, with the blue tag is actually belongs to Microsoft Continuum Dock, which is works 50-50 chance. And there's another one where I had it somewhere, like for example, this one, I do have this, USB-C to USB-C cable. This one, I assume it should work with HP one, but it doesn't. Every time I'm using this cable, it says, please make sure you connect the HDMI correctly or something in these kind of, kind of lines. And this cable doesn't work. This cable, which is branded by Dock Case, it works perfectly with both the devices, Next Dock 2 or HP Elite 1. So it is a bit of the, um, I don't know, it's, it's weird. The HP Elite 1 uh, sometimes works with the cable, sometimes doesn't, and it's like I said, it's very picky. So, uh, and by the way, the HP Elite one from dead to go into DEX is between 12 to 15 seconds. It's depending how fast you are with connecting everything up. So 12 to 15 seconds every time you close the lid and you open it up again, it's off. So you use another 12 or 15 seconds, maybe more, connect everything up, press the button. You're sitting there waiting for this to start and it's, it's just extra waste of time just by, if, if even yesterday I was using the HP one, I closed the lid by accident and I'm like, I was like, oh no, open up, great. So connect everything back up and again and again and again. It is a bit of a waste of time. Where, like I said, hey, next dock two, you close the lid, you open the lid, boom, it goes back on within a matter of seconds and it's much faster. And it's, it's just screen goes from standby to on much, much faster. Resolution, next point is on my list, next resolution. Both of these devices will give you 1920 by 1080p resolution DeX. Both of these devices. When you compare the screen side by side, like I said, this is 12 and a half and NextDoc 2 is 13.3. When you compare side by side uh, the screens, uh, obviously this one is bigger than HP one. And they're, both exp uh, 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 they're both displaying 1080p resolution. HP One shows this 1080p slightly sharper than NextDoc 2. I am not really a good expert on resolutions or anything like that. Um, I think, and this is just my opinion, and this is my theory, that because it's, it's sharper on the screen because 
the screen is squ squashed, it's smaller, so it's, it's less space to display 1080p, where on an XDoc2 screen is slightly bigger, so there's more space to display 1080p, and it feels, uh, the HP one feels a bit more sharper. And another thing, I tried to find what kind of display, I'm looking right now on my notes, if I mentioned anywhere, I know that the NextDoc 2 is IPS panel. I think HP one is LED panel. I don't really have a notes. I think I read somewhere LED light. LED light. So this is possibly could be a sharper, sharper um, screen. And that what sorry, that's the reason why it's sharper. Again, uh, both screens looks amazing. Both screens looks brilliant. Watching videos, browsing the internet, playing games. I I can't really tell you which one to go for in this in this category. I'm just letting you know that HP one feels for my old eyes a displaying screen the picture sharper than um, NextDoc 2. About the brightness, if I crank up the brightness on both of the displays, um, HP Elite one, actually, you know what, I think the rest of them is probably going to be more, more to display. So what I'm going to do now, let me quickly get the both devices connected. And once I connect everything up, I will, I will carry on giving you a, a review on this. So don't go anywhere. So I have both of the devices are now connected. The NextDoc 2 showing DAX from my Galaxy Tab S6, where HP one showing DAX from my Note 9. And I hope the camera can pick it up, but it is feels that the, probably it's a wallpaper. I think it's the same, no, it's not same wallpaper. Let me open the uh, web page and see how it's gonna show on the web page. So let's go into the DEX and Samsung DEX subreddit group. Let's get into Samsung DEX subreddit group here as well. So uh, right now, like I said, there is this issue with the mouse pointer. So I need to be extra slow using a mouse pointer when I'm going up and down and slightly faster going side by side, left and right. So right now, uh, this is the uh, HP one and the brightness of both of the devices actually at the maximum level. And as you can see, this shows the page a bit more brighter compared to um, NextDoc 2. For me personally, I don't really see this to be an issue for, for myself. Uh, I still love to work and, 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 and use NextDoc 2. But as a comparison, I, feel, uh, I would like to, like, I'll, feel, I will get demonstrate for you the difference between the brightnesses on the, the both of the screens. Uh, I'm looking right now onto the uh, my list, what else I would like to cover, and the next point will be keyboard. The keyboard on a NextDoc 2 is a full-size keyboard, and uh, a couple of things that I'd like to point out that I really like on uh, the keyboard on NextDoc 2 compared to HP one is the arrow keys. Arrow keys are the full-size arrow keys. Uh, I hope I will be able to show it to you without dropping the and disconnecting everything. So arrow keys are full size. It's very useful for me when I'm working on Excel files I, and I can use the uh, arrow keys quickly moving down through cells. And other keys is a home end, page up, page down, which is very useful, especially home and end when I'm editing something or a uh, text or writing something. Shift home straight away jumps to uh, and selecting all the row of the text and etc. And jumping for a document or page up, page down as well is very useful when I need to use it. Uh, and uh, in Excel or Word or any, any programs, where on the HP one, the arrow keys left and right is full size, eh, but the up and down, it is they are half the size what the neighbor, neighbors, neighbor keys actually are. So up and down is sometimes I'm pressing the wrong keys and sometimes even end up pressing both of them at the same time. There is no extra keys on the right hand side for up and down, uh, home and uh, home and end or page up, page down. It is a bit of the not the big problem for me, but uh, once I, I got used to using these keys on the next of two, it is a bit of the, um, I keep pressing the side of the panel, expecting to have a key there. And then it's, 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 um, it's not there. So it's a bit of the annoyance. I'm just quickly checking um, uh, what else is on my list. And next one is uh, the sound. So when I'm typing on the next of two, key press, it sounds a bit louder compared to the, uh, the next dog too. So it feels a bit more um, muffed. I think that's the word to use. I don't know, it, is, it feels much quieter when I'm typing text on the, on the HP one compared to next dog two. But uh, again, it's the, um, I still like to type the, uh, on the next dog two because the keys is, is, is great. 
of, of typing uh, and obviously well, well to be honest right now I'm thinking the difference between the keys is obviously is how picky you are of typing the text I find the typing on the HP some, sometimes a bit um, it's it's hard for me to feel the differences where the key starts and ends so it's more like a muscle muscle memory I think uh, when I'm typing I'm, I'm keep pressing the wrong keys on the HP one where the the differences where the key edge is on the um, on the next doc two is more more out, more uh, prominent is that the best word it's, it just gives you the feel that okay this is edge of the key you, you you're about to go across the border where on this one it just feels a bit of the um, a bit of the um, that I, I, I might end up pressing the wrong key. Okay, I already mentioned about the, the home and uh, page up and down buttons, um, HP, uh, right, yes, the keyboard angle. This is, again, uh, one of the things uh, that I like on the HP one, and uh, NextDoc 2 don't have this. When you open the, the NextDoc 2, I hope you can see the camera, so let's quickly, it basically stands on the desk using a four rubber pads on the bottom, and when the screen is open, it's not touching the desk, so it opens and the device always stays flat on the on the desk. It doesn't really, by the way, it doesn't really move around, but it stays flat. Where you, you if you're using the HP one, um, I'm trying right now to show it to you, it has this like a chrome, as you can see, metal thing when you open up. It raises the device slightly up and puts the keyboard at the angle and when it's a bit raised up, it feels, for my personal use, I can type longer on HP, on a HP laptop, compared to the NextDoc 2 because it's at the angle and I'm not getting the wrist aches that that often. On, on the NextDoc 2, it is flat, it is a bit, uh, I don't know, it's, it's just, I, I can obviously type as well, quite well on the NextDoc 2, but it feels that I can type for longer periods of time compared to a, the HP one and as I mentioned on the next doc 2 there is a rubber pad which keeps the device on the table quite firmly where on the HP one there is feels like a plasticky rubbery like a here yeah, like a anti-slippery uh, I don't know like a tube thing and the the uh, the uh, let's say it was the hinge hinge side there's two plasticky feet one by here and one is by here and okay they look great they look futuristic yeah, yeah I don't know but when I put this one on the desk the device doesn't really stay especially on this desk that well and it's still still moving around when xdoc 2 is basically it's like a welder to a table I can actually shake in all the tables by trying to move nextdoc 2 where the HP one is just all over the place sliding around so again it's, it's if you put on the glass, Glass table, I think in NextDoc 2, I do believe it's still going to be firmly stuck to it, where HP 1 is pro is going to go all over the place and slide, and so obviously it might end up being uncomfortable while you're typing. Uh, backlight keyboard, I, again, if you are working in the in a dark room in um, late nights, obviously the both devices has the backlight keyboards. Uh, the NextDoc 2 has two stages of the backlight, so it's basically... Um, what is it? Where is that key? I keep on, off. So backlight on, backlight off. Where HP one has on, max off. To be honest, the difference between on and on and max, it doesn't really that big of a difference. Obviously, right now in the daylight, in, in, in the bright room, but in the night, it is a good, it gives you a slight boost. To be honest, I'm always using the max because the it's, it's just, I don't know, it's, it's, it is, it's obviously a preference, but they they both have a backlight. It's just nice to know to have this extra level of uh, brightness. If, for example, let's say on the next dock two, this on brightness it doesn't really enough for you, so it would be nice to have extra boost um, to to extra boost to um, bright, put the backlight on, and obviously easier to see the keys. Uh, next one is trackpad, and uh, trackpad. I do have a lot of points about trackpad because. Obviously, um, majority of or Android apps they all intended to be interacted with the on the touch screen. So mouse point is very important using any apps. There is no like a keyboard shortcuts 
on the majority of the apps that you can use. Obviously, like for example, say on a Microsoft Word or Excel or any Office apps, um, there is a Control C for copy, Control V for paste, etc. But majority of the apps all require some sort of a touch input, which can be emulated with a mouse pointer. So trackpad obviously is probably going to be the most used tool on your devices. And as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, the issue with the Android 9. So right now I'm going to demonstrate if I go from left and right, as you can see, mouse pointer can't go straight line as all goes. But if I go up and down, you see it's just a small, small slide of the finger and mouse pointer already traveled from all the way from the top to bottom of the screen. But if I try to use this uh, from the left to right, as you can see, mouse pointer takes me three swipes to get from one side to the other which is the issue on the Android 10. But like I said, it's not a big deal if you're gonna connect the um, Bluetooth mouse. I'm just trying to lower, lower the screen resolution for next next point. Uh, so it's the, um, you can connect the Bluetooth mouse, let's say, and the problem will be solved. Okay, so trackpad, um, left and right clicks on the next dock two, left and right clicks working. So left, right click opens, and left click closes, opens, closes. Brilliant, left and right click works. On an HP one, left and right click doesn't work. The way to get into a pro into a property window, uh, so double tap with two, two with their two fingers, tap with two fingers, emulates like a right click mouse point. And it is a good thing and a bad thing. Actually, I don't really use that much the, the, um, the left and right click on here because it does have the two finger tap as well but it would be nice to have here sometimes I keep pressing this and it doesn't work and I realize that, oh yeah, this doesn't support. Next thing is a trackpad feel on my list. Feels like a mouse max right, yes, feel of the trackpad. The next dog 2 trackpad, is, it feels, the surface of trackpad feels rough, if that makes sense. It's more, it feels like a mouse, mouse, mouse uh, top the mouse mat uh, surface when you're using the next dock 2 trackpad where hp one is slippery it's some it's actually too slippery for my taste and it's uh it's very um i don't know it's it's very well it's too slippery for my taste it, it, it finger but by the way finger slides up over the uh, trackpad without no friction at all um but the problem with with the uh, on the next dock 2 right now about the trackpad the dead zone when you move the finger for about three millimeters two three millimeters on the on the next door two or actually the mouse pointer starts moving about half a second later once you've done a finger swipe so doing a precise movements on the next door two can be a bit of a pain compared to the hp one because once you move the it's, it's, it's very precise. Uh, even if you move half a millimeter your finger on a trackpad, mouse pointer already starts moving. Where on the next dog two, like I said, it is a bit of a dead, dead zone and combined to this rough surface, uh, this precise movement can be a bit of a pain when you're using a trackpad on the next dog two. But obviously I can connect the, the Bluetooth mouse or wired mouse, wireless mouse on any of these devices. Obviously the problem will be solved for, for, for this trackpad issue on Android 10 and this dead zone thing on the next dock too. Okay, next thing, trackpad movements. Uh, yes, trackpad movements. So let's open up um, the Samsung DeX subreddit group. So I am on a Samsung DeX subreddit group. Let's refresh the page on both of this because I'm getting something about the Reddit errors. So I want to scroll down. So I use two fingers, I scroll up and the page goes down. That's how I used to, I, I, I'm, I'm used to use the trackpads. I'm using this. this. This is how the Galaxy Tab S6 trackpad on this cover case works. You go up and it's like you're moving the page up and the, on the screen page obviously scrolls down or scrolls up um, in this case. So let's say, okay, I'm going all the way down. I'm going all the way up. On the next dock too, to go down, I need to move my fingers down. To go up, I need to move my fingers up, which is okay. I, I can get used to this, uh, into this inverted setup. But the problem what I get uh, after using NextDoc 2 for quite a couple of hours or so, I'm going back to this, the Galaxy Tab S6 keyboard cover case. And this tab, tab uh, trackpad works the same as a HP one and not the same as the next dock 2. So when I'm using next dock 2 for two, three hours and I'm straight away connecting this to my tablet and trying to use this, 
first couple of attempts, I start doing wrong. I expect this to work like this, but actually this works like that. I hope this makes sense. So inverted, I think that's that's the terminology I need to use. And it's it's annoying me at the first couple of attempts, first five minutes or so, once I switch for from this keyboard for this trackpad to next door two trackpad and vice versa when I'm switching from a next door two trackpad to this trackpad. This inverted setup is a bit of an annoyance. Obviously it's no no problems when I'm going from from HP one all the way to next door two and back and forward. So it's not a problem. But I thought again it's one of these points I'd like to mention to you guys. Okay, next thing I would like to show it to you. Uh, it's called trackpad quick shortcuts. So if I open the browser and I open the um, let's say total commander and I do the same I open a browser and I open total commander where is the mouse pointer it's very hard to precisely move so right now they both have two apps running I have total commander in the front and I have uh, the um, browser at the back at the at, in the background at the back end to switch switch around obviously I can use alt tab so I can go from this to this Okay, so one thing as you, as you saw from full screen, this goes to a uh, window mode, so I can switch between them. On this, I can do the same, but there is an option. You take three fingers and I swipe. So right now I'm changing the app. So by using three fingers, I can do the same as Alt Tab, which is great. I don't really use that much, but it's nice to have when you need to switch between two apps. And you can see it doesn't really minimize them. It sometimes actually does, but right now for some reason it doesn't do not minimize them so I can switch between two apps and obviously if I have another app open let's say I have the file manager open so I can go with three fingers I'm gonna say okay I need no I need browser I only need a uh, file manager and you can use three fingers to move around and switch them on the um, HP one this kind of thing don't exist Okay, next one thing on my list is a pinch to zoom that I would like to compare between these two. So we on the website, let's refresh the website and let's go on the website here. Again, with this Android 10 issue, it's very hard to move the mouse pointer with the trackpad. But anyway, we are here. So you go pinch to zoom. As you can see, I'm using a trackpad and I can pinch to zoom in and out with no problem. It's quite, it's very useful when I need to do a, a screenshot. So let's say I zoom in on a portion of the website, I press the button to do a screenshot and it takes a screenshot of this. On the uh, next doc 2 yes, there is a zoom in, but it's very janky. So there's no, there's no fluid movement motions about zooming in and out. It just jumps like cut, 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 cut. It's just bump, zoom, 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 zoom. And it is a bit of the annoyance uh, for me. But uh, like I said, I don't really use, you go, I zoomed in or zoomed out so much, I can't even see what the letters are. Let's reset all the both of them. Come on, reset. Don't want to reset. Anyway, zooming in, pinch to zoom, it works, like I see, it's perfectly on a, tab, on a Galaxy, on a HP one. And like I said, it's, it feels a bit janky. Uh, it's, it's, it feels more like you would do on the Windows Chrome browser holding control and using a mouse wheel is it goes into increments instead of fluid motion and zooming in and out. Okay, let's see what's the next one. Uh, track pinch to Z, zoom in and out. Okay, yes, uh, trackpad issue. Okay, trackpad issue. Uh, on the HP one, I don't Note, I, ha I haven't noticed any issues with the trackpad. Obviously, left and right click, this is like a, a bug, but I mean, when I type in, there is no, I don't really get that unintended presses on the trackpad because it's such a small compared to the next doc 2. So when I'm typing, I, I, I can type with confidence that I'm not gonna press the, the this portion of the trackpad and my mouse pointer will end up somewhere on the screen selecting something. Where on the next doc 2, when I'm typing, I keep pressing with this portion of the, my palm, I keep pressing the trackpad and I, the text gets selected somewhere else. And when I'm typing, I realize that the pointer from here jumped here in the middle of another text and it starts starts overwriting or movement, moving everything what I was typing previously. And for some reason, sometimes, and I will try to demonstrate this now, I get the calculator started. Here you go, calculator. So what I did, I just moved in with the word palm and let's get calculator. I can do the same apparently with just a finger. So as you can see, 
moving. I'm not sure if this is a if this is supposed to be a shortcut. I don't really want this to be a shortcut. Every time I move from an edge or from a ta from a lap dock metal portion to a trackpad, um, the calculator runs. I don't need this. I don't know how this how this button needs to be fixed or how to how to work, get a workaround. It's just one of these things that annoys me. And usually when I use the next dock two, I press function X escape to turn off the trackpad and I'm just plugging in the standard USB mouse or wireless mouse or Bluetooth mouse, uh, something like, like this, like a Microsoft designer Bluetooth mouse. And I'm using that instead. I know the trackpad is turned off and I don't need to worry about it. But when I when I trackpad is on, obviously I need to be extra caution not to do the the this movement to start the calculator. Okay, next thing what I'd like to mention is about the IO ports. So what I'll do now, let me quickly disconnect everything up. So okay, disconnect, disconnect. Right, let's talk about the IO ports, what you will get on these both devices. Okay, right hand side of the both of the devices, let me get this way. So on the next dock 2, you will get USB type A 3.0 headphone jack and micro SD card reader. With the HP one, you will get USB type C for charging, USB type C for data transfer. So you can plug in, let's say, USB C, which I'm right now trying to find USB C to USB type A uh, adapter, something like this, which is you can get or you will get or you already received with any of the Galaxy devices, the smartphone. So you plug this in and it's, it does a conversion to a USB type A. You can plug in USB mouse, USB keys, hard drives, etc., 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 and it works perfectly. And what else you will get are uh, the power indicator. So when you press this button, as you can see right now, it's two LED lights. This means it's around 50% of the battery got charged. Other side of the lab docks, on the next dock two, you will get full size HDMI in, USB type C for charging, USB type C for Raspberry Pi computers, and possibly this will work with a Nintendo Switch. I can't tell you, I don't have a Nintendo Switch to confirm that, but I think I have a feeling that this might work. And the next one, the last one on the right is USB type C to connecting smartphones. On the HP one, you will get a micro HDMI output, USB type C to connect your smartphones. Uh, I'm not sure again um, if it's gonna work with Nintendo devices. I only tried with the um, with the smartphones. There's a power on and off button and a headphone jack. Speaking about the um, about the I/O ports and more specifically this SD card. Uh, SD card. I at the moment there's nothing in there. I had 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes SD card inside there. But what I have noticed, there is a bug or, or issue with Microsoft Office programs and SD card. For example, and I think I already mentioned that into one of my videos about working from home using only Dex. I will leave a link to that post in the description below. By the way, I leave a link to my working from home using only Dex. What I think you need to uh, consider before uh, going in only in Dex setup. But I mentioned this about the SD card issue and what's happened with the Microsoft Offices, uh, Office apps. When you have SD card in here inserted and you, let's say, have SD card inside your Galaxy device, Office programs will take priority reading this SD card and will ignore the SD card on your device. So if I, I have 256 gigabytes SD card inside this Galaxy Tab S6 and I had 32 gigabytes SD card in here, and when I was trying to save files into a D card or reading them, etc., I was able to see SD card only that SD card in Microsoft Office apps. But if I used my Samsung File Manager to move Excel file into SD card built uh, inserted into Galaxy Tablet, the Excel app was only reading the files. There was no write permission, and that was baffling me for quite a while. But basically, that's. Uh, that's a quick issue uh, I thought I would need to mention to you guys if you wanna, if you want to pick either of these devices. Okay, and I think my list is over. I covered all the points that I wanted to cover in this video. Sorry about the video being so long, but I decided to uh, just go for go go for it and obviously make sure that I cover everything and it's gonna help you to choose which device you would like you want to pick. Me personally what I think the 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 um, the lab dock would be. 
the best option for you. So let's talk about the price now. The next dog two is currently uh, it's it's from the you when you will buy next dog two you will receive it from actual manufacturer actual seller. Obviously, if you look for second hand, someone eBay etc. Yes, we'll buy second hand. This is goes right now around two hundred fifty dollars. I think two hundred fifty dollars or somewhere around it. HP Elite Lab Dog is a discontinued product, so only one way to get it is using eBay, uh, Craigslist, and obviously you will get the second-hand device. And the prices vary. Uh, I got this one for less than two hundred dollars last year from California. That's why when I received it, the actual plug that I need that I need to charge the device with is this. So I had to get myself an adapter. So that's why um, this goes from California and obviously it's not European or not UK socket, UK plug. So I had to get the adapter. So, but when you look to get yourself HP lab dog, you will get a second hand one. And you need to uh, think, um, uh, you need to basically have one of the thoughts in your head before you're going for this. Is the person who's selling you this is only one owner of this device? How long he used it and what's the battery life i mean how much battery degraded of this device when you're buying second hand when you're buying next dog 2 you're getting this from manufacturer brand new not being used and you will obviously get the battery life much much better compared to hp one speaking about the price like i said 200 around 250 dollars this one goes from around 150 dollars all the way to 600 bucks for this device which don't really work that well with android 10 and Microsoft Continuum project is long dead. So it is a bit of weird when the people selling these devices for 600 bucks. And obviously if somebody's selling this means somebody's buying it. But the uh, if you were looking to buy to get yourself a HP one, I would say 150 would be the maximum price of what I suggest to pay for this because it's a discontinued product. It's probably already have a, a, a battery degraded level on the, the person who's selling this for you to you. Sorry, um, probably used it for a year or so. Maybe he's not even the first owner. There was a previous owner. So you need to buy this device with caution. Well, like I said, next door too, um, it works. You will buy from the um, from the actual manufacturer. Another thing I would like to mention that I don't think I had already in this video. When you're buying a lab dog, you're buying a device to make your decks. It would be a phone, would it be a tablet, would it be a EMUI, and etc. You're buying a device which makes your setup portable. And obviously, you're buying this device with thought that you're not going to replace it. Uh, in one year or two years. I don't think I'm going to replace the next dog 2 for quite a long time now as long, until this actually dies or I, I, I basically it goes into pieces. And obviously because it's all metal, I don't think that's that's the case. I think it's going to survive for a longer period of time. But what you buying these devices for for making sure that your decks will be portable. I, like I said, the HP one is built off of the plastic, hard plastic, and it's all, all flex, even all when it's all closed, it's all goes sideways. So I feel this is more like a like a fashion statement that look at look what I have, what an amazing device. Look, it's it's brilliant. Where this one is feels more like a standard cheapish laptop, but the outside thing is basically can be this this I think that's the word. Uh, to say basically inside is what matters not what's outside so this can probably survive maybe one or two drops and then it can be dead where well, this feels that it's going to survive longer so when you're looking to get yourself a lab dog will it be next dog 2 or the new one by the way they announced it's called next dog 2 touch with smaller bezels and a touch screen i already backed this up i do expect this to be start shipping in july hopefully so I'll do a review about that. Don't forget to subscribe to see that video. Uh, but when you're buying a, a, the lab dog, I suggest to go for next dog too because, okay, it's heavier. It doesn't really feel that, it's still premium, but does it feel that premium as an HP one? But it will survive. It will survive the, the couple of drops. I believe it's gonna survive a couple of drops. It's very heavy, very sturdy. It's well built, it's heavy duty. And by the way, your HDMI, full size HDMI port. I can connect any device that outputs video via HDMI. I can connect my Shield TV, Xbox, PS4, P3, 
PC, you name it, if the device outputs video via HDMI, this will display. Where this one, HDMI, micro HDMI, just for output, and this is for phones in. So just for DAX use or mobile desktop environment use, this is great. But for versatile device that you can use not only with your devices, with your, with your let's say you take this, you take uh, Nextdoc 2, and let's say you take your Switch. Or you go to your mate's house and he's got the Xbox, but his TV is dead, dead or something. You can still use that to play your Xbox games on it. Plug in the HDMI in and you have a DeX output. So uh, this is quite a lengthy video. I hope I covered everything in this video. And let me know in the comment section below what you think. And I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.